Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirabbil alamin. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala sayidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi fi kulli lahadhatin abada. Ada yang amin lahi wadhalihi Allahumma atina min ladunka rahma wa alimna min ladunka ilma subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma 'allamtana innaka antal alimul hakim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Nawana ta'alluma wa ta'anim wa tadhakkura wa tadhkir wa naf'a wa intifa'. والفادة والاستفادة والحث على التمسك بكتاب الله وسنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم ودعاء إلى الخدا ودلالة على الخير ابتغاء وجه الله مرضاته وقربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى مع لطف وعافية برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إن نسلك العلم لدني ومشرب السوف الهاني يا وهاب يا غني اللهم إنا نسألك العلم لدني ومشرب السوف الهاني يا وهاب يا غني اللهم إنا نسألك العلم لدني ومشرب السوف الهاني يا وهاب يا غني اللهم سلي وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم ألهمنا علم نفقه به أمرك ونواهيك ورزقنا فهم نعرف به كيف ناجيك يا رحم الرحيم اللهم إنا نسألك فهم النبي وحفظ المرسلين وإلهام الملائكة المقربين في عافيته يا رحم الرحيم اللهم أغننا بالعلم وزينا بالحلم وأكرمنا بالتقى وجميلنا بالعافية يا رحم الرحيم آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم إنا نستودعك ما قرأناه وما نقرأه في هذا المجد ما قبل ما بعد فاحفظه علينا حتى ترده إلينا وقت احتياجنا إليه يا رحم الرحيم اللهم أكرمني بنور الفهم أكرمنا بنور الفهم وأخرجنا من ظلمات الوهم افتح لنا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا حكمتك يا أرحم الراحمين آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم يا من مقاد الأمور كلها بيده وإله رجل الأمر كله يا فتاح عليم يا فتاح عليم يا فتاح عليم افتح علينا فتحا قريبا وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقد من لساني يفقه قولي وسدد لساني وهدي قلبي وافعل كذلك بأحبابي أبدا وارزقنا كمال فتوح العارفين والفقه في الدين مع كمال الإخاس وصدق واليقين والعافية والغنى والنصر والحفظ والنفع والانتفاع وخير تدارين وعلوم الأولين والآخرين آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين الفاتحة أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد بسم الله okay. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم continue our book and we are at page 46 which is this now I'm here I'm here we're here at page 46 okay I think I think that's what, because of this my mark puts <laughs> we're at page 46 okay so um we actually went um previously we went through the uh, dua uh, the dua between sunnah subuh and fardu subuh so I hope that people have been practicing that dua as far as you can if you're unable to read it then at least listen to it right inshallah um, and there are many uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala There are many uh, recordings online You can actually How come you can't I can't, I can't scroll this Okay uh, And then there are many recordings online and, um, the, uh, For you And then also um, The etiquette of after the prayer And so to ensure that after the prayer You do that The very basic um, zikirs I do Do uh, Ayatul Kursi right? Do your uh, Subhanallah Alhamdulillah And Allahu Akbar Say three times Say three times Say three times and then uh, make your dua right, after prayer. And then we were speaking about that. Um, it's a comprehensive 
and then and then and then and make make dua with a comprehensive dua that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught Sayyidina Aisha, which last week we mentioned in the week before we mentioned how that goes. Uh, oh Allah, Allahumma inni as'aluka mil khairi kulli a'ajilhi wa a'ajilhi ma alim tu ma alim na minha atau ma alim tu minhu wa ma lam a'ala wa a'udhu bika min shari kulli a'ajilhi wa a'ajilhi ma alim na minhu wa ma lam na alam. أسألك الجن اللهم إني أسألك الجنة وما قرب إليها ومن قول أو عمل أو اعتقاد وأعوذ بك من النار وما قرب إليها من قول أو عمل أو اعتقاد وأسألك من خير ما سألك منه عبدك ونبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وأستعيذك مما استعاذك منه Abduka wa nabiyuka Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Ayat ini should be a doa after every prayer. Doa is is all comprehensive doa, mashallah. And I didn't um I didn't know that when we were young, you know, we thought we were thought this doa when we were young. Um, and it's in the most uh, very basic uh books where you learn, learn to, to to pray. They they were distributed you know when long time ago lah. Now I don't know I don't know what's being like what's the syllabus now. I hope that it's still in the syllabus for children. That when you learn to pray, uh, you learn to make all these duas. And you memorize these du'as. Right? So, I mean, Alhamdulillah, you know, you can you can memorize them in English, you can memorize them in Arabic, whichever is easier for you to memorize. Especially if saying them in in your own language uh, makes it more. Uh, you're able to you're able to um, experience the du'as more uh, by saying them in the in the language that you understand. However, uh, there's still, as I mentioned before, there's still the blessing of the words of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the in his own language. There is there is still that blessing. So of course, um, then was the best thing to do. <laughs> the best thing is to uh, memorize the, the Arabic with the Arabic, and I mean to recite the recite to the Arabic. But then you're looking at the English translation at the same time, right? So you get you get both lah. <laughs> you get the the blessing of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's words himself, right? And then you get um, understanding in your heart of what you are saying. Right? So it's all encompassing du'a, and, and of course our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he is a genius in du'a, right? and there was a, there was a scholar once in Egypt. Who wrote an entire book about the genius of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in du'a? So, Subhanallah. So oh, he said, "Oh Allah, I ask you for all good, whether it comes sooner or later. <laughs> it doesn't matter whether it comes sooner or later. All forms of goodness which I know and which I do not know about, and I seek protection from with you from all evil, whether it comes sooner or later. It doesn't matter. Does it come? Does it come sooner? Does it come later? That which I know and that which I do not know." I ask you for paradise and for those words and actions and beliefs that will help bring me closer to it. And I seek refuge from uh, with you from the fire and with those words and actions and beliefs that will bring me closer to it. And memorize, eh, mashallah. Memorize these du'as of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Make it after your after every prayer or at least once a day in one of the prayers. You know, uh, if if you find it difficult to do it up to do it after every prayer. And also understand that it's all for you. It's the whole thing is for you. So the more you do, the more for you. Right, the less you do, the less for you. As simple as that. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Right, so how, what do you want? You know, what do you want in the in in, in not what do you want in life? What do you want in your in your afterlife? And <laughs> right, what do you want in your next life? You know, Subhanallah. And already, what 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 are we? What's our priority? You know, Subhanallah. I right, so may Allah give us the tawfiq, the ability to to put this to action. To write it down somewhere, you know, at least do it one time. Like, because if you have already learned it, you do it one time, so as to not be counted as those who learned something and never practiced it. Right? So at least you do it one time <laughs> to free yourself of the blame of not practicing something that you have learned. Right? Then you know, with the intention, do that one time with the intention that insha Allah, in your life, um, you will come to a point whereby you are doing this consistently. And 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 Subhanallah. Um, it's fine. Like, trust me. If you do it one time with a very strong intention of do of of having this be consistent for you in your life, you will find yourself in your life having this consistent for you in your life. <laughs> you, you will find you find you come to a day whereby it is so natural to you to do this du'a that you know you you wouldn't you can't even imagine uh, that you ever did not do this du'a. It's fine. Allah. But do it, do it in that way, and um, also specifically, if you really want to put something into action, and it's, if you really want to, if you want, if you really want to bring something into your life and keep it, you know, kind of uh, consistent or permanent in your life, then um, what I would say right, is to first, if you if you're in any part of the year, right, what, what I would say is to first put it into Fridays because the blessings of Friday, right? So you can you can implement it from Friday night, Thursday night, the uh, Maghrib, Aisha, and then to the next day Friday. 
right? Or you aim this to be done on special days or occasions um, throughout the year, like Arafa and Ashura and um, Bin Rabi Awal and, and so on. Right? Or, uh, and, and, or, and, <laughs> and uh, you put it, uh, or you start practicing it during the sacred months so that, you know, you are more aware of the sacred months and, and you, you up your, or you increase your, your ibadah, you increase your worship in the sacred month. Right? And the strongest one that I found, you know, in my own personal experiences, the strongest time to actually begin any practice that you want to keep through, the, through your life is to begin it in Ramadan. Right? To start it in Ramadan. And how many people I know, they begin to start, you know, being very serious, you know, about certain parts of the religion in Ramadan. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, you know, because Ramadan multiplies all your deeds, right? And that has many dimensions to what that means. Right. One thing is that it multiplies physically on the day of judgment, the reward that you get, whatever you do in Ramadan. But at the same time, you understand it multiplies the blessings of whatever that you're doing in Ramadan. And blessings means, means prolong. The definition of blessing is the prolonging of goodness. Okay? What, what the, how do you define blessing? Baraka. Baraka. And al khair ala dawam. It means, it means to, to, to prolong goodness. Right. So when you say that you have baraka in your wealth, Right, the goodness that comes from that one dollar is stretched right, to its limit, and you don't, you can't even it blows it will blow your mind if you if you know if you knew how much goodness came from that one dollar. Right, so if you see baraka in your in your time, you have one hour and so much goodness, and then you keep there's like a like a like a domino effect going on. Remember you, that you you do you do some goodness in that, in that one hour of baraka time you know, or blessed time, then it, it extends to other people and other places, and it's it's, it's stretching all. Over. All the all wide. There is the meaning of baraka. Right? Baraka meaning means the prolonging of goodness. Right? Even though it's something that is small. Right? So subhanallah, um, the baraka in Ramadan you cannot imagine. Right? So that's why if you begin something in Ramadan, it will, inshallah, it will continue for your life, uh, in your life. Even if you forgot all about it, Allah's going to bring it back to you one day and and and, and, and you know knock on your door and, and tell you go and you know and, and give you the ability to actually perform it, inshallah. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. All right, now. All right, so it, uh, and, then, and then the dua goes, I ask you for your paradise and those words and actions of these that will bring me closer to it and I seek refuge from, refuge from the fire and those from those words and actions and beliefs that will bring me closer to it. It's already an all-encompassing dua. You don't even know what are the words and the actions and the beliefs but you leave it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to choose for you. Right? He's, he's, he will filter it for you. Right? Whatever you need you know, for paradise and whatever you need to get away from the hellfire. And I ask you of the good which your slave and prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked you. This is dua I said in the morning. If you look, if you're following the khulasa, right, this dua I said in the morning dua. And I seek refuge in you from everything which your slave and prophet Muhammad sought refuge in you. Oh my Lord, whatever matter you have decreed for me, make it make its end one uh, one of guidance. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. There's the next line. Eh? Just here. Uh, Allahumma wa ma qadayta li min amrin faj'al aqibatahu rushda I what ya yeah, Allah whatever you have decreed for me in whatever matter you have decreed for me then let its ending be righteousness and let it be righteousness inshallah subhanallah and then to do the dua that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam advised his daughter Sayyidina Fatima Zahra to make and this dua you can find in the Wirr Latif right this dua is right there in relative of, of a different a slightly different version right, but similar right, similar dua in the relative right, where it goes um ثم ادعوا بما اوصى به رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فاطمه رضي الله عنها وارضاها وقل يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك استغيث لا لا تكلني الى نفسي ولا الى احد من خلقك طرفه عين واصلح لي شاني كله يا رب العالمين the relative has a slightly different variation of this dua any maybe different, different narrations Right, so Yahya Qayyum, and this is what scholars have said to be the greatest names of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Yahya Ya Qayyum, La ilaha illa Anta Subhanaka Inni Kuntu Min Al Zalimin. Yahya Ya Qayyum. To do it forty times in the morning, it it will it is one of the ways by which the doors to to the doors to your du'as being answered will be opened. To say Yahya Ya Qayyum, La ilaha illa Anta Subhanaka Inni Kuntu Min Al Zalimin. Yahya Ya Qayyum, La ilaha illa Anta Subhanaka Inni Kuntu Min Al Zalimin. Yahya Ya Qayyum, La ilaha illa Anta Subhanaka Inni Kuntu Min Al Zalimin. Forty times in the morning, 
I, if you're if following the khulasa, it's all there. <laughs> Al Habib Omar, he has, he has really done the, the homework and the work for us. He's, he's collected everything that Imam Ghazali says and he's put it into a small, tiny book that you can just carry around and just follow the book. Right? Um, it's all there. It's all there. Right? So, but, but whoever does this early in the morning, um, four times, then that is one of the reasons by which your du'as are accepted. One of the reasons for, for du'as to be accepted is the du'a of Nabi Yunus alayhi salam when he was in the will, uh, when he when he fled when he when he, when he, when he, when he re- went away from his people, not fled, but he went away from his people before it was time for him to go away from them, and Allah subhanahu wa taala caused for him to be thrown off the ship and swallowed by a whale, and even in in the depths of the whale, Nabi Yunus alayhi salam uh, he raised his hands to Allah subhanahu wa taala and he says, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al This is the way of our prophets. There is no god but you. There is no god but you. For uh, you are all perfect. I am a wrongdoer. And Nabi Yunus begins this dua in the, in the belly of the whale, right? and and of course uh, you put if you couple this together with Ya Hayy Ya Qayyum. Or ever living or self subsistent or the one who is independent, subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you call the Allah, and these two names is what some of the scholars have said to the greatest names of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. That if you call to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, by His names, Ya Hayyu Ya Qayyum, over and over and over again, that whatever problem you are going through at a point in time, it will be rectified by Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah. So whatever it is, you know, you, wherever you are, even at that point, it's easy, mashallah. If you're, if you're facing some, some difficulty, you're facing some fear, if you're facing some worry, whatever you're facing, just go to your heart and say, Ya Hayya Qayyum, Ya Hayya Qayyum, Ya Hayya Qayyum, Ya Hayya Qayyum, over and over and over and over again. Until your heart begins to settle, and then and and you'll find that, and then you leave the matter to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. You find everything settled for you. Subhanallah. We're still in the morning, eh? For Mughazali's day, right? We're still in the morning. So you, can you imagine if every every human being, not just every Muslim, but every human being, were to begin their day with having such a, a spiritual, um, a spiritual direction, a place for them, and they, and they face their day in this way. Every morning you are directed in the correct, with, with, with correct heart and correct mind. You know, going through your day, subhanallah, subhanallah, how, you know, how many of our problems will be, will be solved <laughs> right, if we just begin our day in that way? Right, just by being so focused on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, بِرَحْمَتِكَ أَسْتَغِيثْ مِنْ عَذَابِكَ أَسْتَجِيرْ أَسْتِهْنِ شَأْنِ كُلَّهِ وَتَكِنِ لَنَفْسِ وَلَا إِلَا حَلِمْ بِخَلِكُوَ تَرْفَتَعَيْنْ There's one in, in Bidu Latif. Here it's a slightly different, um, not different du'a, but different arrangement. Right, some parts before, some parts after. Right, so, by your mercy, I beseech your help. Leave me not to myself or any of your creation, even for a blink of an eye. Means I don't trust myself. I don't trust me with myself. Right, you have handled my affairs, Ya Allah, and set right for me all of my affairs. SubhanAllah. Every morning, do this. Every morning, do this. And evening as well. Right, and you'll find, you find so much in your life will change. SubhanAllah. Then say what Nabi Isa, alayhi salam, uh, uh, said and and on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the best uh, the best peace and salutations where he said Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad the dua um uh, Allahumma inni asbahtu la astati'u daf'a ma akrahu wa la amliku naf'a ma arju wa asbah al amru kulluhu bi yadi ghayri wa asbahtu murtahanan bi 'amali fala faqira afqar minni so du'a of Nabi Isa, <laughs> subhanAllah. Well, Allah, I enter this morning unable to repel what I dislike and powerless to attain the benefit that I seek. All matters this morning are in, hand, are in hands of other people or other than mine. I enter the morning at the mercy of my actions. You know, I, I'm, I'm tied up by my actions. And there is no proper poor than I. <laughs> there's no, there's no faqir afqaru minni. And there's none who is more you know, uh, destitute, you know, more poor, more faqir than me. Oh my Lord, don't give my, give my enemies cause to gloat over me, nor my friend cause to lament over me. Do not cause calamity to occur in my religious affairs. And there's the worst form of, the worst form of calamity is calamity in your religion. There's the worst. Uh, the, in fact, there's the only real fitna. The only real tribulation is when it happens in your religion. Because that one, the, 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 the consequences is eternal. Like if you cause a person to just give up on your religion or give up on, on the right path or give up on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the consequences is eternal. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from such calamity. Do not cause calamity to occur in my affairs. Let not this world be the greatest of my concerns. 
Let us 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 ولا تجعل مصيبتي في ديني ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا أو همي ولا مبلغ علمي ولا تسلط علينا من لا يرحمنا يا أرحم الراحمين. Again, all these du'as you find in the kulasa <laughs> is arranged. Either in the du'a at zuhur or asar, you find truly Imam has taken all Imam Ghazali's works and put it into a very, a very simple manual to follow. I said so you don't have to keep flipping, 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 and knowing, uh, figuring out what's the dua. You know, it's all found in the uh, in the khulasa. Right. And then dua, and right, then dua using whatever of the duas that have come to us from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You can memorize them from the uh, from his own book, Imam Ghazali's own book. We have compiled in the book of invocations and supplications from the from the Ihya Ulumuddin. Uh, so you can, uh, he said, go, go look to my book and go and find from my book, my other book. And there's a lot of uh, du'as there. If what he has put here is too little for you and you want more, you can go to his other book um, where he has a lot more. And of course, Imam Nawawi also says al right, in, the, uh, in Imam Nawawi's book. And there are many. La. It's really, it's, it's so, the amount of du'as and zikr that our Prophet Sallallahu has left for us you will see it, it, it's 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 you know it's oh, it's an ocean and even an ocean is an understatement uh, it is it is it's so it's so immense and you see one dua to do us one so long the dua on memorize and want to implement so long this dua our prophet this gives you a, 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 an insight a, a glimpse into his life right like if, if in in those few years when he was on this earth this is the amount of duas they collected from him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is a man always present with his Lord, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So in all of his affairs, you know, all of his affairs, like he will mention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even like, you know, in, in the hadith in the Salihin, like about how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when rain would fall, he would, he would always pull back his sleeves. He would pull back his sleeves and let the water fall on his, on his uh, uh, skin. And when he was asked about that, he would say, you know, قريب أحدي, قريب أحدي لربنا, uh, it is like this, this water was just with the Lord. Uh, this water is blessed water. It was just with the Lord. And rain is blessed water. So they would, she, he would pull his sleeve back and he would, he would expose himself to the rain water to get the blessing of the rain water. And, and, then, and then, you know, when, when, when he, sees a, he sees a full moon, his dua, when he saw the full moon, you know, that your Lord and my Lord is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's so, Every moment of his life, he's connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If anything, you know, learning all these du'as, uh, if anything, and in fact, it's a great thing that it gives you, uh, an, it, it acquaints you with your Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and it allows for you to, to really have a glimpse into this, the life of this, this human being, in this greatest, the, the greatest of all human beings, and into his, his, his way of thinking. That is so pure and pristine, subhanallah. All about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it, like a glimpse into his heart as well. How a person du'as, right, how someone makes du'a, tells you a lot about that person. It really tells you a lot about that person. And maybe it, should, it could be a good question to ask someone to get to know them better. And right, to ask them, what's your favorite du'a? Right, what's your favorite du'a from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? What's your favorite du'a? So if someone's like, um, I don't really have a favorite du'a, <laughs> then, you know, then you know that person that has not been reading about du'as. <laughs> right, but if you ask someone, you know, what's your favorite du'a from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Which do you like the most? <laughs> or from any of the prophets? Or from any of the righteous? Right, which du'a is your favorite du'a? Right, I have a favorite du'a also. You have our favorite du'as. I always have a favorite du'a that you, that you like. <laughs> and it, tells you, it, tells, it says a lot about your state. And also, if you make your own personal private du'as, you hear yourself, you know, what am I talking about? What am I saying? Then it does tell you, it gives you, it gives you, you know, an insight into, into what, where you are at so with regards to your worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. MashaAllah. Allah. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Right, so then he says, your time from after, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Now, then he says, then, then is your time from after the morning prayer until the sunrise should be divided between four types of spiritual work. Right, so from the morning prayer to sunrise. 
and you should be doing worship. The first type is supplication, dua. Second type is remembrance and glorification, dhikr, which you can repeat on a prayer beat. Uh, third type is Quran, and fourth type reflection. That's so why it's a good idea to go for a walk. <laughs> if you want, if you have the time, you know, and you want to go, for, you want to just get some fresh air, go for a walk. In a, in this early hours of the morning, in a six after you pray subuh, for example, now subuh is very early. It's six thirty around there. Actually, five thirty around there. So by the time you pray, you done your zikir and everything, and you finish praying subuh, you can just get if you, you can pretty much get out of the house by six. Right? And from six to seven, just go for a walk, right? And do all your aura, do your zikir, do your Quran, and or come back into Quran or Quran do before that. You know, you know whenever you can do. Um, and then and then while you're walking, right, because it's, it's the early morning, the air of the early morning is always fresh, right. So you can be reflecting on the on the clouds and then the the sun rising and then, you know, mashallah. I mean that I, I'm it does a lot for the soul of a person to go out there and, and just breathe in some fresh, breathe in some fresh air, and and reflect on uh you know on Allah's creation. It brings them closer to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. It helps them. In their worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. So what do we reflect on? Imam al-Hadas is the fourth chapter in, in the Book of Assistance on reflection. And how do you reflect and what do you reflect on? You can always go and get it. Go and buy the Book of, reflect, of, the book of Assistance and turn directly to the chapter, chapter on reflection. And he has all of the types of reflection you can, all the types of reflection that you can do. When you want to reflect, because to to reflect for a moment, right? It's, it's said in a narration. To reflect for a moment is better than a thousand years of worship, because reflection brings you closer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala in a way that nothing else can do. A right? reflection, especially reflection of the Quran. And so, if you don't know how to reflect over Quran, then put on a class <laughs> on Quran. <laughs> it's on uh, any class on Quran. We will help you reflect on the Quran. You know, and if you want to reflect on the words of Rasulullah Islam, then reflect on hadith, right, on some hadith and reflect. Right, now, this year, in the morning, we're doing uh, the seerah of Rasulullah Alaihi Wasallam. So, you can do that. You can, you can reflect on his life and how he is and his beauty and his gentleness and everything. You know, have that. Right, have that early in the morning. You know, rather than, than, than all kinds of radio <laughs> online, it's not not beneficial. Wala hawla wala quwata illa billah. It's really a choice. Eh? If, one, if you have one, a pair of ears, <laughs> only one pair of ears, uh, you can you can put you know something in one ear and another thing in the other ear. It doesn't work that way. And uh, you have to choose what you feed your ears with, because your ears are is one of the windows to your heart. Reflect upon your mistakes. So he gives you, he gives you some some examples, eh? some ideas. What do I reflect on? Reflect upon your mistakes and your sins. Your shortcomings and deficiencies in your worship of your master, and how you have exposed yourself to Allah's painful punishment and His great anger, and this is kind of reflection is supposed to boost you and push you, right, to doing more, um, and to trying harder and to clean up your life. It's not supposed to cripple you, right? If you find this kind of reflection is is, is crippling you and is causing you to to even be worse and to digress. Or, or not, and uh, to, to be worse and to and to um degenerate in a sense to go to go backwards, right? To get worse, um, then you are reflecting in the wrong way. Right? You're, you're just beating yourself up and not pushing yourself forward. And you're just running yourself down. That's different. Right? So, when, so for example, let's so let's say if you were to go in the morning walk, and then you're just reflecting over your mistakes. So you reflect, you reflect of on yesterday, and you said to yourself, you know, I was I was a bit harsh, you know, on my. I was a bit harsh towards my husband, or I was a bit harsh towards my sister. I was a bit harsh. It's all my own reflections. <laughs> a bit harsh towards my, towards the kids. You know, I was a bit you know, maybe, maybe too too harsh on them. Maybe I was, you know, and then, and and you know, and then you just reflect, 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 and then you think to yourself, you know, and then and then it's all the people around you, right? And then and you think about, you know, your your Quran. You think about your prayer. You think about. You know, your zikr and think about, you know, when I woke up too late this morning, you should woke up a little bit earlier, see the Quran also, rush, rush to the Quran, then we reflect on the Quran. In the sense that you, 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 you are, what you're doing, you are, you are basically troubleshooting <laughs> through, your, through, your, through your life. And so you, you're going to come up with solutions. So you can get tomorrow, going to get up a bit earlier, going to read a bit more, going to sit down and reflect a bit more, you know, need to push myself a bit more, a bit harder, you know, I need to start controlling my tongue. Start controlling, you know, how I uh, interact with other people. I should do. And so you you keep going this, doing this every morning. So it's a reflection. Is basically you're trying, you're you're fixing, and you're fixing, and you are basically giving yourself 
a session of advice. <laughs> and you're the best person to advise yourself because um, you won't feel defensive against your own self. <laughs> if other people advise you, you feel defensive. If your own self, higher chances that you are, you will accept the, the, the advice if you're true to yourself. You know, if you're, unless you're not true to yourself. <laughs> Right, so reflect you know, on this. Then organize your regular duties of worship for the entire day by means of careful planning in the hope of redeeming your past feelings and shortcomings in the hope of guarding yourself against, in the hope of guarding yourself by this means uh, from exposure to the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the day. Basically, to have a timetable. Right? To have a timetable is important. And to have what you're going to recite at each part of the day is also important. Right, so, um, so this is why our our we read in the khulasa, the aurat is is broken up to the prayer timings. I right, so it is it is you know arranged in that way. I right, so have an arrangement in your day, have an amount of time of things that you do every day. So have a minimum of what you have to do every day with regards to your worship, and follow and follow that minimum. I right, so if early in the morning you okay, going to do we read, going to do surah 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 yasin, going to do um, uh, part of the Quran. It's all in the morning. Then in the evening, so then you go to work, for example. Right? And then in the evening, right, to do it, uh, Surah Muluk, Surah Waqi'ah. Right? If, and then whatever you have, you have, you, that you have made into a practice, and then make sure your witr is done, that kind of thing. You know, put, put like a schedule on yourself. Right? Or basically, you know, things to check. Right? That you have done all these things. So you don't just, you don't just, you know, you don't have, so that you will have a game plan with regards to your spiritual progress. And you're going to progress to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have a game plan. Right? So you're going to make sure that you're going to keep to this every day. There's a minimum that you have to keep to. Then there's extra that you can, you can do if you have time. Kind of thing. Right? So make the intention to have goodwill towards all Muslims every day. Resolve that your entire day will be occupied with only obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every single day. Put it up high in your in your house. Eh? Today I resolve to be completely obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just put that early in point on the on the on the fridge, right? Put, put it somewhere big in the house where everybody in the house will see that. Today I resolve to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as much as I can. You know, or as as far as I know. As far as I know. Detail in your heart the acts of obedience which you are capable. Right, so, so, so in your heart or write down lah, right, write down on the, on the fridge or write down somewhere that you can you can check every day. Now there are all kinds of apps that you can actually download and you can you can just do a check right, uh, for yourself. But basically, it's your own it's your own discipline at the end of the day, right? So you just see what you have put for yourself minimum and make sure you don't go below the minimum. The acts of obedience which you, which you are capable of doing, then choose the best of them. Consider how to prepare the conditions to bring about such acts. That means, you know, don't just say, okay, every day I'm going to read, you know, um, uh, five pages of the Quran. Right? No, put aside, put aside a time, you know, whereby you'll be doing this. Right? And then if you miss it, then how? Okay, if I miss it, then I will have to do it at this time. Uh, so you will take up my, like, my, my, my other time, you know, of doing something else. Okay, so have, like, have a, have a game plan. Lah. Have a game plan. Right? So like what I would say, you know, depending on where you're at, you know, if someone is still struggling in the five days prayers, in the five, in the five times a day prayer, then I will say focus on that first. Focus on praying five times a day properly on time. Right? Do not miss a single prayer. Right? Do not sh- that ha- put it in your heart that it is, un- it, is, it is really completely unbecoming of any Muslim to miss any of the five prayers. It's only five prayers. Come on. Right, so if if you're if you're unable to to make the five prayers, then that should be your first focus above everything else. I right, make the five prayers, right, and then um, and then if you want to increase on that, then increase the prayers before and after. If you want to increase on that, then increase in uh uh then then, then, then increase in like surah yasin and surah waqi'ah and surah muluk right, through the day. You know, increase on that, then increase in your zikr. You can do in the morning, in the evening. If you don't want to follow any particular formulation of zikr, then this, the, 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 what you should do minimum, what you should do minimum, is a hundred istighfar in the morning and the evening. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. A hundred la ilaha illallah morning and evening. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. And a hundred salaw and the proslaw ala some morning and evening. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. And in fact, you should make it 300 because that is the minimum, minimum, right? 300 of slawats in the morning, evening. So I just say that. I just say this is the minimum. It sounds quite a lot. <laughs> MashaAllah. Right, but, but really, it is the minimum right, for what we, can, we have to put in. 
Like for our own soul. It's our soul. Right? So don't complain it's too much. Don't complain it's too heavy. Don't complain it's, it's just, you know, too troublesome. Don't complain about anything. It's your, it's your ruh. It's your ruh. It's your soul they're talking about. I, it's no one's, you know, no, it, <laughs> I, everyone, no matter what they, everyone does whatever they want to do for their own soul. So if someone wants to be lazy about it or someone wants to make excuses about it, then for them, their laziness, but for them, their excuses. <laughs> and if someone wants to try and try and try again, no matter how many times they fail, then Alhamdulillah, Allah Shakur, Allah is appreciative of your efforts. Don't forget that. Allah is appreciative of your efforts. If Allah sees that you're trying every single day to, to try and hit this, make this mark, uh, and maybe you fail, you try again, you fail, you try again, then Allah is shakur. Allah is shakur. Uh, Allah is the most appreciative. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not neglect to reflect upon the nearness of your end. <laughs> how many more years? Or how many more months? Or how many more days? Just don't know. Just don't know. How many people have gone already at this point? Uh, so the nearest of your end upon the approach of death that cut short all hopes upon the removal of matters from the domain of your free will and the possibility of reaching a state of sorrow and deep regret due to prolonged delusion. Right? If someone does not get in, get themselves up and wake up to the matter, right? and kick themselves <laughs> and, and, and get up, stop making excuses, stop, stop listening to all kinds of rubbish online, saying something is not wajib or is wajib or, is, uh, or something is not wajib or something is uh, and saying it's all about the heart, it's not about the outward, it's all about all kinds of rubbish. All kinds of rubbish going online. This is the idea I was speaking to one of my students, whereby she was just telling me that people were saying to her that she's not sincere, you know, in, in, in putting on the hijab. I right? there's no point putting on the hijab is to get off for the time being until she's sincere and start, start doing it again. That kind of advice is very is, is really bad advice. That really, I don't know who's telling, who's saying all this kind of advice to people. You know, sincerity comes with knowledge, not with taking off the hijab and then going into sin and sinning against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then waiting for sincerity to come. No. You keep it on, and you seek knowledge. Keep it on, and it's your inobedience. At least your inobedience. And seek knowledge. Right? So, so it's, you know, subhanallah, subhanallah. Having it on, and not being sincere, is still better than having it off, and not being sincere. <laughs> I mean, think about it, right? I mean, how is having it off, and not being sincere, a better situation? Having it on and not being sincere is about the situation. Right? Because having it on, at least you're in obedience, even though you're not sincere. Right? Having it off, you're in disobedience and not sincere. Right? I mean, subhanAllah, think about it, right? But sincerity increases with, with knowledge. It's not with whether it's off or on, but it's about whether you are learning or not. That's where sincerity comes. Right? You learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa fall in love with them, then you sincerely do things for them. You should do things because it, they said they told it to do so. And subhanallah. When she was telling me about all these things, and she was like, people like, like people saying to her, but even about prayer, they were saying to her, if you're not sincere about your prayer, then you stop, stop praying for a while. And I said, that is, that's terrible advice. Who in the world has been speaking to you? And I said, alhamdulillah. And then you, you, you spoke up. Right? That is shaitan. It's just, they're echoing shaitan. They're echoing shaitan. The one who says to go into sin while you're not ready is what shaitan is saying to you. These are the words of shaitan. No, you keep to your obedience even if you don't want to do it, even if it's so hard on you, even if it's the most, you're dragging your feet on it, even if you're not sincere in, about it at all, even if all of these things, keeping to obedience is light. It's nur, it's light from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah shakur. Allah is grateful. Allah is appreciative. He will grant you more than what you can ever imagine. Because he knows how much you're forcing yourself on it when you really don't want to do it. Right? But you're forcing yourself on this act of obedience only because Allah said so. Only because Allah said so. And, and it, it, it does happen to people. It's not, it's not everybody who loves you know, to cover the aura. It's not everybody loves to pray in the night. Not everybody loves the ruzikir. Not everybody loves Quran. For some people, it's really like... It's, you know, it's, 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 it's really dragging, dragging their feet and they're really dreading it for some people. And Allah knows that if they're dreading it, then Allah knows that if they still do it, you know, nonetheless, then Allah knows the amount of reward that they get because they really, really fight their nafs and they force their nafs to get up right, and to do it because they know it, they, they have to do it. SubhanAllah. Right, so, 
think about it and think about it and and if you if you are one of those people who's who give people who gives people bad advice and stop doing so i want to, 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 to just say to people stop saying to people i no, she's not the only one i've heard several people say that like, people out there giving them advice to stop their acts of worship until they're ready to continue the acts of worship no don't do that but do what is minimum right do what you can right and then and then learn i right? connect your heart I like connect your heart. Learn about the Prophet. Learn about the Quran. I like learn. Go and study. But do it. Do it. I like don't stop doing it. Subhanallah. There is nowhere in the way of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam whereby he said to anyone to stop doing it. In fact, he has said to people, if only he would do it. He has said that about certain certain, certain individuals, like Sayyidina ibn Sayyidina ibn um, Sayyidina ibn Umar. If I'm not wrong. But he said, no, how, what a fine man he is if only he performed the night prayers. He's, that's what he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because he used to perform the night prayers in the name of then he stopped for a while. And so Rasulullah sallam, you know, he gave him the push, you know, and said, continue, continue doing the night prayers. And right? don't, don't stop doing it. And so even if it's hard on you, at least two raka'ats in, three raka'ats in, something, something in. You know, even if it's like you wake up, take your wudu, do, do, just do some zikr. Even if you don't want to pray, just do some zikr. Something in. You know, don't, don't find yourself going backwards in acts of obedience. Don't find yourself doing that because that's how shaitan gets to you. The more layers of obedience that is on, the more layers of obedience that, is there, that there are on you, the more difficult it is for shaitan to penetrate through that, to get to your heart. Right? So shaitan, what does he do? He removes the layers one by one. And he whispers to you, no, stop praying. He whispers to you, stop that zikr. He whispers to you, stop that class. He whispers to you, stop that Quran. He whispers. So he's removing uh, a layer after layer on top of your heart. So eventually he, gets, he can go right to your heart and then do whatever you know, uh, corruption that he wants to do and create what kind of havoc he wants to create right, in the heart of, of a believer. So always understand, eh, your worship is a jinnah. Your worship is a... It's a shield. Your worship is a shield for as long as you stick to your word. Even if it's so difficult, stay. Stick to it. Right? Stick to it. It's a shield for you. It's a shield for you. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Right. Detailed in, uh, so do not neglect to reflect upon the nearness of, uh, of your end upon the approach of death that cuts short all the hopes upon the removal of matters in the domain of your free will and the possibility of reaching a state of sorrow and deep regret through prolonged delusion. Now, don't let shaitan delude you into thinking that you have so long more to go or delude you. Another form of delusion that shaitan does that I've been hearing recently from my students, right, that um, shaitan deludes a person to think that they are condemned to the hellfire. So because they are convinced that they are condemned to the hellfire, um, they stop doing any act of obedience. Right? Shaitan are games with shaitan, eh? Games. Um, the only one that we know who is condemned to the hellfire is him, Shaitan. <laughs> He's the only one who is condemned to the hellfire. Nobody else we know is condemned to the hellfire unless Allah says in the Quran that Abu, like Abu Lahab, you know, or Fir'aun. But you're not Abu Lahab, you're not Fir'aun. <laughs> you're just somebody in, in the 21st century. <laughs> right? No one says you're condemned to the hellfire. How could someone even believe that you're condemned to the hellfire? Where's your hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Have your hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are ten prayers that should be part of your um, litany of glorification and remembrance. I sing, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la. Lahu al-mulku wa al-hamdu. Wa yuhi wa yumit bihari al-khair huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. Wa hayu la yamut bihari al-khair wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. It's a dua of entering the marketplace, but also to do it every day uh, in, your, uh, in, your, in your remembrance. Eh? لا إله إلا لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو حي وهو حي لا يموت بيد الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير لا إله إلا الله اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد نعم لا إله إلا الله هو الملك الحق المبين so you do it in Zuhur time, a hundred times. La ilaha illallah, al-mulk al-haq al-mubin. La ilaha illallah, al-mulk al-haq al-mubin. La ilaha illallah, al-mulk al-haq al-mubin. In Zuhur time. Then number three. La ilaha illallah, wahda al-wahid al-qahhar. Rabbu samawati wal-ardi wa ma baynahum al-aziz wal-ghaffar. And there is no God but Allah, the one, the conqueror, the Lord of the heavens and the earth. And all that is between the magnificent, the forgiving.
and then sing subhanallah walhamdulillah wa la ilaha illa allah allah akbar wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-anil azim subhanallah walhamdulillah wa la ilaha illa allah allah akbar wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-anil azim make it a habit eh, to do all this zikr you know it's, when you just do what all the imam ghazali says you find your life you have no space in your life to do anything that is not worthwhile Right, really, if you do, if you keep to all these things, you, you won't find time to. I mean, if so, the the fact that people can find time to waste is just a proof that they're not doing enough uh, zikr. If you just do this, just the minimum zikr that Rasulullah taught us, you won't find any time at all right, to waste. And it's Subhanallah, uh, Subhanallah al Azim, wa bihamdi, Subhanallah al Azim, wa bihamdi. And uh, to to uh, this number five. Eh? Number five is. سبوح القدوس من رب الملائكة والروح سبوح القدوس من رب الملائكة والروح is what you will recite after witr my prayer then سبحان الله بحمده سبحان الله العظيم سبحان الله بحمده سبحان الله العظيم then number uh, number seven I أستغفر الله العظيم الذي لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم وأسأله توبة والمغفرة Istighfar in the mouth, istighfar every day. So even if you don't follow exactly what Imam Ghazali says, at least like you do have you you have la ilaha illallah, you have subhanallah, you have istighfar. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. And then number seven, and number eight, Allahumma la mani ali ma ataita wa la muati ali ma ta la rawad ali ma qadaita wa la yamfaun the jadi min kal jad. You should be doing this after every prayer. Then number nine, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad three hundred times a day. Minimum. Salawat on Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Number ten. Bismillah al-Ladhi la yadur ma'asmi shayun fil ardi wa la fi samai wa huwa sami wa alim. I just want to do with the kids every day, every morning. Um, just this is a habit. It's a habit. It's part of the little latif. Right? But it's a habit to just do this, especially in a time whereby all these viruses and illness and diseases and all kind of and all kinds of harm they can come to people. Read this every day, inshallah. Right? It will be a form of protection. Right. And repeat this, this each of this um zikir, a uh, prayer means zikir on your prayer beats a hundred times or seventy times or ten times, and ten is the minimum so that is that so that the total will be one hundred. So this is the least you should do in in your uh, in your day. Then read then read this little regularly. Did not talk before the sun rises. For it in the, in the narration states it is superior to freeing eight slaves or descendants of Nabi Ismail alayhi salam. This refers to occupying oneself with remembrance until sunrise without speaking in between. So to, to just occupy yourself with dhikr and the sun is risen. Which is why going for a walk is a good idea. Go and go for a walk. You don't you don't talk to anybody. <laughs> and if you stay at home, you don't talk to people. Of course, if you have kids and everything, then bring everybody all for a walk. Everybody go for a walk. <laughs> yeah, mashallah. I mean, whatever you're able to do. And Allah knows, Allah is shakur. And Allah knows what you go through. Know this well and you will be divinely guided if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah. Okay. So right now we're just at the sunrise. We just began our day. Our day we're still at the rising of the sun. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Um, now the question here. Why are calamities called fitna? It's the same meaning as slandering. No, fitna in Arabic means calamity. Right? Or trials or tribulations in Arabic. Eh? Fitna means um, trial or tribulation. The Malay word is slander. <laughs> it's a Malay word. Malay, Malay meaning for fitna is you fitna me or you fitna me. That means um, uh, slander. <laughs> but in, 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 in Arabic, fitna doesn't mean slander. Fitna means uh, trial. Or tribulation. Okay. Um, there is an etiquette for performing some practices of zikir, masih of wudu and so on. Okay, of course there is a, there is a, what is um, preferred. Where right? you can see what is preferred, what is optimum, which is of course have been wudu, have your aurat covered, face the qibla, you know, um, have your heart uh, cl- cleaned out of any distractions, right? And be and 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 then uh, do your zikir. You know that is the best best case scenario, but of course, um, for a lot of people that is not possible, especially for those with young children or those who are going to work, right, early in the morning. Right, so you can do it on the go. You know, however you're able to do, do it. Try your best to be in wudu at the very least and have your aura covered if you're unable to keep, to keep to the qibla, right. So it, it, to have the try as your best to have as much etiquette as possible, 
right? But of course, zikr can be done in any way or form. There is no nothing as haram. Um, you can you can you can perform zikr without your aurat covered or without without, without wudu. It's not haram, right? It's not it's not disobedience, but it is it is a lack of etiquette. Mm. Um, is it haram to do sunnah prayers if you have outstanding prayers? The you have to qada. It's not haram again, right? The only time whereby praying is haram, right, is when you're on your menses, <laughs> and or when you're praying a sunnah prayer in the haram timings, then praying is haram, right, to do that. Right? It's not haram, right? But what it does is that you you still have your debt. <laughs> so say someone you know you have they have an amount of debts to pay, and they they around giving charity, right? The charity is accepted, you know, they're giving charity. But it doesn't do anything to the your debts that is compulsory on them. They still have to pay their debt. <laughs> so if you have that kind of time to pray sooner, the scholars will say, why not settle your debt first? If you have like, for example, you have you know, that, that outstanding amount to pay in debt and you go around giving out charity, people will say to you, you know, you have a lot of debts, you know. Go and pay all your, your debt first. Then you can give out in charity. You know, or you can do both at the same time. It's up, it's up to you. But no one can say it's right or wrong. But at the same time, you must know your debt is, still has to be covered. Um, what would you recommend for the morning zikr du'a for those who to go to work sometimes difficulty rushing through my morning prayer to do zikr and du'a um, I would recommend with al Latif. just go on, on YouTube and then you just search let me show you all eh? you just search with al Latif. and I'll do it in a while but, but last question here if we struggle to wake up with tahajjud like today did I manage to yesterday did I manage to is it going backwards no it's called being it is called struggling <laughs> that's not called going backwards it is called struggling because every single day you intend to do so. Uh, you're, not, you're not letting go, uh, but you're just, you know, um, sum this up, sum this down. You know, it's called being human. <laughs> it's called struggling, inshallah. Um, um, if I were to just go here, so let me show my brother's page. I'm trying to, to get these videos out. Um, but if you go with it, let's see with it. With it, uh, a Latif, right? So you can click on anyone. They're all okay. <laughs> so just click on anyone and then and then play lah. There's a cute boy here. So you click on the cute boy. Allah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Qal Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Fadkurun. Okay, never mind. Um, did my audio of itself. Bismillah. 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 Is my audio okay? Whenever I on something, then my audio will off itself. Okay, that's okay. I'll stop there. Um, can you hear me? Can I? Okay. <laughs> okay, we'll just stop there for today. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Tips on to wake up before subuh and stay up after subuh. Tips to wake up before subuh, recite last two ayat of Surah Kafi. Last two ayat of Surah Kafi. Uh, to stay up uh, after subuh, go for a walk. <laughs> you will be up, and as long as the bit is 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 in the in, in you know within reach, the bit is within reach. <laughs> so you gotta get away from the bit. Okay. Um. Come and doing my post at the work for praying at time. This we have to call the after work. So I don't have any baraka. Okay. The question is that I have. Find myself in tough situations to leave my post at work for praying on time, and then it results her in good doing kaba after work, and then her question goes into baraka in the salary. Okay, my advice is to try ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to make it easy for you to pray on time, because what is most important in your life are your prayers. The most important thing in your life, nothing else is more important. So ask Allah to make it easy for you, however Allah has chosen to make it easy for you, and strive and strive and strive. Right? There's not nothing is impossible uh, if you uh, place it in the in in the in the will of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Okay, try hard, try hard. Uh, whether it has barakah or not, ask Allah to put barakah in it. Ask Allah to increase you in your prayers. Right? Ask Allah. Depend on Him. Subhanahu Wa Taala. 
فاتحان الله رزقنا من نافع وعملا قاطع وسعنا ودلنا الهدى ويسر به قبل النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم وإلى أرواح معاني من المشيخنا وزب الحق علينا وإلى حاضر النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله الفاتحة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم على عصر إن الإنسان في خسر الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام جزاك الله خير جزاك الله خير جزاك الله خير <تصفيق>